He selects 12 guys to come and be a part of this inner circle. And I want you to notice what happens in Matthew 9, 9. As Jesus was walking along, the Bible says, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and did what, guys? He followed him. And today, Jesus makes that same offer to you and I. Do you want to be my follower? Do you want to be my disciple? Well, let me kind of define what the word disciple means. You might want to write this down on your outline. A disciple is a student or a learner or a follower. It can even be considered an apprentice. Now, the word disciple used in the Bible means a, a couple of different things. I just want to show those out to you. It's used as a, as a reference to somebody who follows another person couple of examples, three examples. Moses had disciples, right? He had people who followed him. Elijah had a disciple named Elisha. Uh, John the Baptist had disciples who followed him. And so to be a disciple means that you're a follower. The word disciple actually relates to a group of those 12 individuals. If you remember the 12 disciples, right? You, you remember that until what happened? Judas betrayed Jesus, right? There were 12 disciples. In the book of Acts, the word disciple is just used as another synonym, another word for the word Christian. And Jesus went around saying things like this. Now, listen to what he said. If you do this, then you will be my disciple. Or if you do this, then you will be my disciple. This morning, I want us to look at what does it mean if you do this? If I do what? Then I'll be a follower of Christ. Well, I gave you six things on your outline. I want to kind of go through them. These are the marks of following Jesus. And I just want you to notice this. Number one on your outline is this. If I'm going to follow Jesus, that means that you and I are spending time with Jesus. We're spending time with with Jesus. Now, how does that work? As I'm thinking about this, how does that work that you spend time with somebody that you can't physically see? You ever think about that? Oh, yeah, I'm spending time with Jesus, but how do I do that? And I can't see him. I can't really have a two-way discussion. Well, I just want to show, show you uh, that you can spend time with him. Uh, like any other relationship, the more you spend time with Jesus the closer you're going to be. Now, just to think in your head, who is your best friend? Who is somebody that you spend time talking to a lot? Just think of that. Get that person's uh, picture in your head. Okay, that person, you, what do you do in that relationship? Well, you talk a lot. You probably hang out a lot. You probably go to different places a lot. And the same is true in our relationship with Jesus. We spend time with God. In fact, the Bible talks about praying without ceasing, being in this constant conversation with God. Let me, let me show you how it works from my standpoint. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm also talking to God. As I'm talking to you about what God's word says, I'm asking God inside of my head, God, give me the right words to say. What, what do you want me to say here, God? Open my mouth. And you guys have probably been there, right? You're talking to somebody, they come up to you and say, you know, I can really use some help or I can really use some good advice or, or what do you think I should do in this situation in my life? And hopefully you're saying something like this in your head, God, help me to say the right thing, right? Constant conversation with God, spending time with him, reading his word. Now the Bible was given to us as God's word and the more we spend time Reading God's word, the more we're spending time listening to God. Now, just so you get the picture, when I talk to God, that's called prayer. When he talks to me, that's called reading the Bible. And that's how you have a dialogue with God. You read his word, you find out what he wants to say to you, and then you talk back. God, I, you know, whatever you're going to pray about, you talk to God. Notice this verse in uh, John 12, 26 on your outline. It says, anyone who wants to be my disciple, you want to circle the words, who wants. Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me. 
because my servants must be where I am, and the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Three things, let me just point out about that one verse. Spiritual growth is a choice. Now look at, look at what it says. Anyone who wants to be my disciple. You know what? You and I have a choice whether or not we want to be Jesus' disciples. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. uh, you and I make a choice every day if we're going to follow God in each and every area of our life. And Jesus says that spiritual growth is a choice. The second thing I get from this is spiritual growth is a commitment. They must follow me. If, if, if you're going to say, I'm going to be a disciple, you just cannot sit there. It requires action. It, 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 it requires us to, to make a commitment. Now, one of the biggest signs of immaturity, let me just say this, is a lack of commitment. Yeah, I don't want to commit to anything. Some people say, I just want to keep my options open. I don't want to commit to a relationship. I don't want to commit to this marriage. I don't want to commit to this job. I don't want to commit to my studies. A lack of commitment is a sign of immaturity. Spiritual growth not only requires a choice, it, always, it also requires a commitment. The third thing I learned about this is that spiritual growth is relational. It's a relationship. You have to get close to Jesus. I love this verse in Mark 13, 14. It says, he appointed 12. He designated them to be apostles. Now notice what he says. That they might be with him. And that he might send them out to preach. It's that relationship. Part of being a disciple. The mark of being a follower of Christ. Is spending time with Jesus. Now let me just ask you this question. How much time did you spend with Jesus this last week? Think about it. Okay, I, I get it. We work. We're going out doing our, our different things. We've got school. We've got oh, tests. We, we've got to study. How much time did you spend with Jesus this last week? Um, I, I love this saying, and I stole it from somebody else, but I've said it before. You and I are as close to Jesus as we want to be. And if we find ourselves and our prayers are not being answered and we're kind of stuck in our relationship with God, well, guess who moved? We did. Because Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And we, sometimes we walk away from God instead of spending time with Him. Notice the second mark of maturity on your outline, and that's this. Loving Jesus with everything I have. The second mark of maturity is loving Jesus with everything I have. In Luke chapter 14, verse 26, it says, Those who come to me, Jesus is speaking, those who come to me cannot be my disciples unless they love me more than they love. Now notice what it says, because this is really huge. They love me more than they love father or mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters and themselves as well. Now that is huge. In fact, another translation says it something like this. The way you love God must be so huge, it must be so big that when you look at your other relationships, it kind of looks like hate. When you compare your love for God with your love for everything else in the world, it looks like this love-hate relationship as opposed to this loving God relationship. Uh, this is kind of a huge thing for us to think about, especially because we love our families, right? You love your family, right? You love those people who are close to you, and yet the Bible says you've got to put God first. God and your relationship with Jesus Christ comes as number one. Notice in Mark chapter 12, Jesus answered them and he said, The first and first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is what, guys? One. one. There's only one God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. When you love Jesus.